Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. Welcome back to our series on Blender for AI developers. Now, up until this point, every technique that I've showed you has been useful whether you are going to render your scene and your data set in Blender, or if you're going to export objects and put them into Unity or Unreal Engine or something else. This one, this video is going to cover a topic that is only useful if you are creating a synthetic data set in Blender and rendering it in Blender. If you only want to just take this to another program for use, then it's time to export this. And exporting to FBX models in Blender is pretty straightforward, and it's also covered in lots of videos, but it's basically you just pick your object, you go to export, and then export as FBX. I also have a video series that I will link to in the description if you need help on exporting objects from uh, Blender to Unity. All right, now, what are we doing in this video? We are going to show how to render out depth images like this. And I'm just showing this in a, an image editing software called Krita, uh, which is free software and actually turns out to be really good for viewing certain types of images like this. So I just wanted to show you, this is a depth image with a small, sphere that's very close to the camera, and then a cube that's uh, in the de default spot, and then a bigger cube that's behind it. And you can see that as things get further away from the camera, they go from dark to light. The higher pixel values heading more toward white end up being brighter, and that means that this is further away than this. Now this actually is very easy to do in Blender, which is really cool. What you'll see here is just the default setup of the camera and the cube. And what we're going to do is set up a, a scene that we can use to create basically this image right here. So what I'd like you to do is switch into the top view. And so I'm going to do that with the 7 on my number pad. And I just realized that I need to turn on screencast keys. OK. Now. This cube right here, we're just going to leave it as is, but we're going to create another cube and we're going to put it back here. So I'm going to do Shift A to create a cube, and I'm going to hit G to move it back over here, and S to kind of scale it up, something like that. And now I'm also going to put a sphere really close to the camera here. So I'm going to hold Shift, and then I can do middle mouse to pan, Shift A, and we're going to create a little UV sphere. And I'm going to move this with G probably to like right here, somewhere that's kind of in this, uh, this view cone frustum thing. And then I'm going to hit S to scale it way down. And now I'm going to hit zero on my number pad. And it looks like you can't actually see that sphere. So it's not in a spot where it's visible yet. And if you don't have the number pad, remember that you can Let's see, there's a few ways to do it. I think you can hit this camera view here. Yeah, like that. So that'll, that'll help you out. Now, why is this not visible? It is not visible because if you view it from here, you can realize, oh, well, there it is. Uh, it is on the floor. So we're going to hit G, Z, and then move this up, and it should be inside there. You can kind of pan around and make sure. And then if you hit this again, now we can see that this is here. And if you wanted to move it just a little bit, maybe something like that. I just did it from the camera's view and it should stay there. Okay, so now we have a scene that can be rendered. And I'm going to switch into the rendering engine cycles. And I'm going to enable GPU compute so that mine renders a little quicker. And then if I render this out really quick, I'm going to hit F12 to render that. Uh, you'll see that this is our scene. Not very interesting, but it's going to be good for testing depth. Now, to do this, we need to go into the Compositing tab. And by default, Use Nodes is off, so make sure to turn that on. And then we can look at what's happening here. Don't really need this, so I'll just move that down. We have this Render Layer node that is passing to Composite. When you render, the thing you end up seeing is this composite node. So it has a, an image, 
and that is going out to composite. Now there is also alpha and depth and noisy image. These correlate with what shows up here in the view layer properties under passes. So you'll see this combined and Z. So Z is the depth. And if I uncheck this, you'll see that the depth goes away. Uh, I don't know what, I don't know if you can actually get rid of combined here. And I'm not sure that you'd want to. If you don't want to use one of these, all you have to do is just disconnect it. Now we're going to show what the uh, depth actually looks like. And to do that, we're going to use a uh, split viewer node. And just like in the layout, you can do shift A and that will allow you to add a node here. You can also go up to the add menu. And I'm gonna search for a split viewer. We're gonna add that here. And what's cool about this is you can pass in two different images and you'll see it um, split in half on the screen. So I'm gonna pass in the, uh, not alpha, sorry, the depth. All right, and since this is really zoomed in, you can't see it super well, you can go to view and zoom and you can kind of zoom out a little bit. That way you should be able to see the full image. And what I wanna show you here, if we move this out of the way, is that this is kind of hard to see actually. We have a sphere, the sphere is visible and it looks like that's working, but it's, I think I can barely see the cube here, this cube, but this one's completely invisible. And that is because the depth that comes out of it is from zero up to infinity, and it's based on how far away the objects are from the camera. So as you may know in Blender, or may not know, the pixel values go from zero to one. Zero being black and one being white. So anything that's above one meter away in theory should be brighter than full white, which would mean it wouldn't show up. It would just kind of get completely washed out and white here. Now I suspect that Blender may be doing something here to try and make this show up. I think it's messing with the colors a little bit, so it may be a little misleading, but that's okay. We'll, we'll work with it either way. So let's see how we can actually have a little more control over that. If we add a, so Shift A, add a map range node, this will allow it, and you can see as you kind of hover this over the, the lines here, I can, I can click that and then it, it automatically puts it in between. Now I can map these ranges, and what I probably want to do is rain, map it from something up to a higher value. And we can start with maybe like 50 here. So you can see what happened here now is that it's compressing that range from being 0 to infinitely far away to zero to 50. So in theory, something that was 50 meters away would show up as the same color as the background, white, because it kind of clamps it. And then if it's anything in between zero and 50, then it's gonna show up somewhere on the spectrum of black to white. So that's helpful. If we wanna be super precise about this and figure out what we need our range to be, then we can go into layout and we can check how far away this point is. If we view this from the camera's point of view, so I just hit the number pad zero, probably the farthest thing away at this point is one of these corners, or basically this whole edge. And just as a rough estimate, we can go here. I'm, a, I'm in the top view right here. And there's this measure tool. And I can click and drag to where the camera is, and I can see that this is 15 meters away. I can try another one here. Uh, about 15, or I guess it's 16 meters away. So 16 is about as far away as it's gonna go. And if we go back into here and we put the max at 16, well, now you're seeing that you can kind of see a gradient here 
as it's getting further away. I know it's kind of hard to see. Um, maybe I can even uh, move this over a little bit so you can see hopefully that up here it's a little bit darker and then it's a gradient out to pretty much pure white. So you can mess with your range here and that will allow you to have more control. I would say pick something that works well for your scene. If you have a lot of things that are say, you know, a hundred meters away and that's about the maximum that you expect to want to simulate, um, then you can set it to a hundred. If you have something further, that's fine too. The thing you want to really correlate this with is what are you trying to create your synthetic data set to match? I'm guessing that if you want to do this, then you have some sort of depth camera that you're trying to simulate and your depth camera probably has some sort of hard limit or not, maybe not hard limit, but a soft limit at how far away it can see. So if it can see reliably up to you know 20 meters away, then you might want to set this to 20. So that's just a, an idea of what you should do there. Now, if you just render this, it's not gonna go anywhere and you probably wanna save this out. So let me show you how to do that really quick. We're going to use a file output node and we'll do shift A and we'll do file output. And we just need to pass in this to here. Now we may also want to output the composite. That makes sense. We'd want to do the image and the depth image all in one. And what we can do here is for this file output, we can go to item properties. Now this has a lot of interesting stuff here. What this is, this box here is a list of outputs. And uh, I know it says inputs, but that's because it's a node input that will ultimately be output to a file. So we can add multiple of these, as many as we want, um, or we can delete them. And let's keep image for now, but let's add another one and we can double click it to rename it and we'll call it depth. So let's pass this into depth. Let's pass image into image and it's gonna go to the temp directory by default. So let's just change this to like um, comp for composite for now. And then the default node or the default file format is PNG. There are lots of others. And if any of these look familiar to you, you may be interested in using them. Open EXR multilayer is pretty interesting. That one's good for exporting uh, more interesting data and keeping it all in one file with lots of different layers. I'm not going to go into that, but it's useful. So now what we have here is, sorry, this is a little confusing. It's still going to the split viewer node, but it's also going to the file output node. And what we probably want to do is change the depth one to not use RGBA because we don't really need it to be red, green, and blue and alpha. We just want a black and white image. And you can also change the color depth if you want more potential layers, or not layers, more precision when it comes to uh, your depth. But I'll just do it for color depth 8, which is uh, 0 to 255 for now. Once you've done this, you need to re-render it. So I'll do F12. And it should save this image as well as the depth image to my temp folder. So... Uh, mine's in C colon slash temp, temp. And inside here, you can see I have two images and I'm gonna open them both with uh, Krita. So not do the open with, okay. We're going to open them here. So I'm gonna close this, open file, and I'll open the image just to show you there's our image. And then I'm going to open depth. So here's our depth image, and you'll see that it starts off very black and kind of goes out to this lighter gray. And that is based on our range of colors that we set up with that color map or the map range. So this is completely dependent on this. 
and you can change how it looks based on that. The cool thing about Krita is you can get very precise values when you uh, click on this little color tool. At least this is the way I like to do it. And you can click on this eyedropper. And if you hover over this, you can see what the value is here. So gray is 12 right here. And you can see it goes up to 13 a little bit. Just keep your eye there as I go out to the outside because this is a little farther away. And then if I'm here, the gray is 123. And as I go out, it gets up to 139. And then here it's at 166 and then it gets to 201. So the higher the value, the farther away it is from the camera. So that is how you output depth in Blender. And hopefully this has been helpful. I, I'm sure there's a lot more that you'd like to know about the different things you can output. Uh, there is a video that I've already put out, so I won't do it again, but a way to do segmentation with this same technique. And basically what you use is the object index or the material index, and you assign a, an index to each of your objects, and it will be able to output an index uh, as a color on your uh, your compositor, basically. Your, it can render a layer that looks like that, and all you have to do is add another, and then you would call this segmentation, and then it would save out another one. So this is a really useful thing if you are rendering out for synthetic data sets, and there's probably a lot more stuff you can do with compositing. I've only probably scratched the surface I guess I'll mention you can do things like change the color of your image. There's all sorts of things that you can pass. Like you can change colors with, uh, you can change the hue and you can invert colors. There's all sorts of stuff. So I just wanted to mention that in case you wanted to like add some blur or something. This is, this is the way you do it. As always, thank you so much for watching. And please leave us some feedback in the comments. We always appreciate hearing from you.